For those who watch my favorite VS Code extensions video, you'll know that I'm a big fan of finding good tools in order to make our workflow easier and frankly, to save us a bunch of time. And so today, we're gonna to take out a new VS Code extension that fellow core team member Rahul just came out with called UDS. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ben Hong, I'm a Vue.js core team member and senior DX engineer at Netlify. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at an extension that I'm pretty excited for because it aims to bring a lot of the power that IDEs often bring to traditional languages like Java and sort of other basically traditional programming languages and bring them into the Vue world where we can do things like um, automatic imports and these sort of things. So let's go ahead and check it out. And so jumping into the browser, uh, what I have here is Rahul's tweet announcement where he talks about the new Vue DX extension. And so if we take a look at it, it'll bring you to this landing page uh, for, while it's called Vue DX as a project, um, as an extension, it's called Vue Language Features. And you can see it's in preview mode, which as far as I'm concerned, it's basically in beta. So it's not completely ready. It's still got a lot of features that it's working on, but already the things that um, work inside of it are already pretty exciting. So as we look at VS Code, we're here inside of the Peak View app. And you know, when we're going through code, a lot of times we want to actually see how things are defined, for example, right? whether it's prop definitions. And so typically, uh, what you might do is you might go, okay, cardless, where, do, where does this exist? And so you, know, you might be like, okay, I get to go into game board. And so you might open up game board, for example, and then you might have to like hunt for it. And I mean, here it is. And so this, while being a simple example, does require, as we saw, a little bit of mental overhead because we have to basically decipher where the prop is coming from. And so ideally what we want here, you'll notice that if you ever right click over um, variables inside of VS Code, it actually has a bunch of things in here that you can do. And so ideally you'd like to be able to go straight to the you know, like component definition, but as you can see, currently no definition is found. And so let's go ahead and in, um, activate the view language features that Rahul built. So I'll go ahead and this is in, oh, this is not view. I want the view language one. This is the wrong one. Here we go. View language features insiders. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, enable it and let's go ahead and refresh the whole thing. How do we refresh? Hard refresh. All right, I'm just gonna reboot it. All right, so then once I've reloaded this, uh, we'll see now that a couple of things. One is that I did add this jsconfig.json. This is something that you need to add inside of the root directory in order to allow things like, um, I believe Vitra uses it too, but but view language features uses it as a way to basically see, like define where all the code is and it can't automatically um, basically figure that out at this point. So all it is here is as please include these files when it comes to doing your developer experience magic. And so as we can see now here with our game board, we have this card list here and already we see that it knows that it's a prop. And when we go to definition this time, you'll see that it actually jumps us all the way to game board and then actually with the prop definition already in focus, uh, which is uh, really cool from like just, uh, uh, just minimizing that barrier of entry to like figuring out where things are. And so another thing that it does is that here, right, we currently have game board, but in the event that we wanted to, let's say, import card on this, right? Uh, so card is actually being used right now. So let's go ahead and just delete this reference at the moment. So if I go ahead and save this, uh, things will probably break, but that's okay, because we're not looking for it to work. Is that here, you'll notice that if I go ahead and do the card, which is actually a finding, and so I can just hit enter here, uh, whoop, and then close it off and save. You'll see that when we scroll back up here, it has automatically brought it in on line 20 and line 11. And this is super exciting for me because I don't know about you all, but having to manually import components when I know they already exist and know which one I want to pick is, um, well, it's kind of a pain. So having this convenience to be able to just pull in the components you want and have it automatically import, do all the things for you, love it. Uh, these are the kind of things that really make a developer experience really, really smooth and enjoyable. And so the other thing that it allows us to do, um, which at least um, that it highlights is, let's say for instance, we wanna change like all of the instance of something. So in the case of like, let's say something like new, do, 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 do. let's go with Flipkart, right? If we wanted to rename Flipkart right now, I don't know about you, but what I would typically do is I'd like probably do a find all and do Flipkart and then just go line by line and change it, or maybe use some multi-cursor 
as a way to hopefully script it out correctly. But IDEs are much more intelligent than that. And so what we can do now is we can essentially go find all references. In this case, you'll see. And find all references actually goes through and not basically doesn't just find the string. Because you'll see that when we do flip card, uh, it grabs it like this, um, which is fine in this case. But references are uh, basically allow you to ensure that you're, uh, yeah, anyways. All right. And so here now, if I want to change all the occurrences of it, you'll see that now if I do new flip card and then we save it, you'll see that one, you know, as you would expect, what I just typed here changed. But then when we scroll down, it's updated here in the return object. And it's also updated here inside of where it's been called. And so this makes refactoring also a lot easier because now rather than hoping to do the right find all and replace, the replace all occurrences works exactly as you would expect it to. And so another thing that's really cool about the ViewDX, uh, the feature that I'm really excited about, is being able to extract templates into component. Because um, as we've done many times on this uh, channel, a lot of times I have pieces of HTML that I want to extract. And so I typically go through the, the, the hassle of going through the Explorer and basically opening it, and then just like creating a new component and these sort of things. But instead, with this new uh, basically HTML, let's see, uh, let's go to card, for example. Let's say for whatever reason, we wanted to abstract this front piece to its own component, which actually is a very possible thing. Uh, again, typically, you have to create a new file and stuff. But with the new view DX, we can actually then say, uh, do, 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 where is it? I want to say it is, and maybe it's command. There we go. So if you do command period, um, I forget what it maps to exactly. But you can see that it extracts the component to the current directory. So you can see now that when I abstract it now, it creates a brand new component called component zero. And it's already brought in everything with it. And gosh, it even went ahead and brought over like props and stuff that it's basically figured out that you're basically carrying over, which is super cool. So uh, definitely something. Uh, again, I'm really excited for the potential this provides us going forward. And oh, so good. And so the one final thing I'd want to leave you off on that a feature that I really like, which is a great experience improvement, is that I don't know about you all, but a lot of times, like when I clean something up, like let's say we brought reactive ref and from view, and we, we stop using it, or like there are pieces of it we're using that are not. So in this case, uh, you know, let's just say, yeah, anyway, so just like this, rather than having to go through and update and organize, so let's actually let's pull a app that a component that has much more imports. Uh, actually, it looks like I kept it pretty clean in this. All right, so let's, that's fine. So I'm going to just import like uh, the confetti from utilities. Uh, do, 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 do utilities dot confetti like that. Okay. So let's just assume I do use it in here. Uh, and let's say I call it and save. So now confetti is being brought in. Um, it no export default. So like this, what is the export default? What did I call it? Uh, launch confetti. That's what I called it. Okay. So whatever. So it launch confetti, and here launch confetti. Okay. All right. So now everything is good, right? Uh, here. So here we go. So we have unused references on top, and then basically things are kind of disorganized. And so again, like. What you can do now is you can organize your imports um, using the command palette here. And when you do, it cleans everything up, brings the utility up, reorganizes it, um, granted in an opinionated fashion. So you see that the components are on the bottom and the utilities on top. But this is super cool. I spend a lot of time cleaning up my imports. And ah, oh, this is that feature alone. Like I, I love, love that feature so much. I don't know about y'all, but I'm really excited for the potential that the view language feature is going to provide for us as far as enhancing our workflow as view developers. And so can't wait to see what other new features and ideas that Rahul and the team cooks up. If you're looking for additional uh, VS Code extensions that I really like, be sure to check out my favorite VS Code extensions video that I'll link up in the next screen. And I'll see you in the next video.